Good morning, everyone. Virgo here. It is July 16th, 2019. Happy Tuesday to everyone. And I would like to draw your attention to the handsome man who is in this photo. I say handsome because he's got a beautiful smile on his face and he looks like he's extremely happy in his service uniform. This man's name is Bradley Washabaugh. Or Wat Watsabaugh. I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Um, he appeared to be very, very happy in this photo, and I don't know exactly when this photo was taken, but I know that it was prior to 2014. And I would like to take you through a little bit of a story of Bradley's life, because Bradley, after this photo was taken, started considering himself to be a private national, part of the sovereign citizen movement. And you can see it's taken a toll on Bradley's happiness. So we're going to start over here with um, where everything seems to have began. This is the Jackson Hole News and Guide. It is a newspaper that is out of Wyoming. And there was an article that was done on the Watsabaugh family home back in back on uh, July 25th of 2014. Budge Drive owner quits foreclosure fight. Watsabaugh tells the court that after trying to save his home, now he forgives the FDIC. So back in 2014, this article was done. I'm going to read you this article, and then we're going to go on and we're going to take a look at how this actually ramped up from there. Keep in mind, when I'm reading these, Remember the smile on that person's face. A Budge Drive homeowner had asked that his appeal of the foreclosure of his home be dismissed because he wants peace and does not feel the Ninth District Court has jurisdiction over the case. Bradley Allen Wat Watts Watsabaugh, or Watsbaugh filed suit in March to fight the foreclosure sale of his home. Last month, an emotion written entirely in the third person and bearing the Watsabaugh family crest, he asked that the court dismiss the action. Quote, Bradley sees that this court is a place where persons are in futile battle with one another. End quote. He wrote, quote, he chooses not to participate on the battlefield any further. End quote. Watsabaugh filed the action claiming that the FDIC and two organizations that bought Watsabaugh's mortgage with First Bank of Idaho had no right to foreclose on his home. Watsabaugh had a 2007 construction loan backed by the property with First Bank of Idaho, which failed in 2009 in the wake of the nation's 2008 financial collapse. The FDIC took took over as the receiver for the bank's assets, including Watsabaugh's loan. The two investment firms named in the suit eventually bought the outstanding balance of the loan according to the Watsabaugh suit. The suit claims the FDIC and its co-defendants conspired to foreclose on the First Bank of Idaho because the bank held mortgages in high-value real estate areas. He also sought to stay to stay a foreclosure auction on his home scheduled for uh, February 27th. The suit was pending for three months before Watsabaugh asked to dismiss it. Judge Timothy Day had not signed an order dismissing the case as of Tuesday. Watsabaugh's Budge Drive home is still listed as belonging to Watsabaugh Care of 2010, one RADC, CADC Venture, LLC, one of the firms that bought out his mortgage. Aside from the futility of the battle, Watsabaugh gave no other reason for seeking to dismiss his case, though he apologized for any trouble he had caused the public as a man of peace. Bradley chooses to forgive all parties and respectfully requests the same, he wrote. He also stated in his motion that he revoked any jurisdiction to the court or any fictional entity. Ha has over any fictional entity has over him 
or the House of Watsabaugh with his motion. The various financial institutions involved had only begun to file their responses to Watsabaugh's claims at the time he sought to dismiss the case. The FDIC hadn't answered Tuesday because Watsabaugh's misnamed the entities involved according to the notice of improper service in the court file. So that was 2014, and we're going to go over now to 2015. So in 2015, May 13th to be exact, we have another actual report in the same newspaper from Jackson, Wyoming, Jackson Hole News and Guide. The heading says, Couples say they are not subject to the law. Watsabaws say they have not consented to Wyoming's jurisdiction. Before this year, neither Bradley nor Rebecca Watsabaw had more than a traffic ticket on their criminal record. In the past week, the longtime Jackson couple racked up a string of misdemeanors as a result of their recent conversion to the sovereign citizen movement. Bradley Watsabaw, who was charged with violating a court order by failing to appear for a series of civil hearings, also netted a trio of misdemeanor citations for failing to produce a valid driver's license vehicle registration, or car insurance. In the midst of his initial appearance on those charges, his wife stood and demanded to give Ninth, Cir Ninth Circuit Judge James Rada a series of papers explaining his lack of authority over the couple as sovereign citizens. By the end of the hearing and after saying repeatedly that she refused to recognize Rada's authority, Rebecca Watsaba was found in contempt of court and bailiffs arrested her on that charge. Her husband has since written a letter to Rada on the letterhead of the House of Watsaba and under his personal House of Watsaba seal and seal of the international flag of peace, informing, informing Rada that Watsaba will not be appearing at future hearings on his case. Filing to appear would put him in contempt of court under Wyoming law, exposing him to six months jail time for each charge. The catch, as far as the Watsabas are concerned, is that they believe that they are not subject to Wyoming's law because they have not consented to be. The Sovereign Citizens Movement, which is tracked by Southern Poverty Law Center as an extremist ideology, posts a wide range of beliefs, most of which boil down to the notion that government agencies, particularly the courts and the Internal Revenue Service, lack jurisdiction over individual citizens who do not consent to their authority. The Watsabaws discovered the movement while attempting to save their budge drive home from foreclosure after a series of unfortunate financial events. Bradley Watsaba built the house and owned it for more than 30 years. In March of 2014, Bradley Watsaba attempted to halt the foreclosure sale of his home, making a wide range of claims against the FDIC, which took over as a receiver for the assets of the in Idaho bank carrying a lien against the property and the investment firms that eventually bought out the outstanding balance of that loan. In his first filing, Watsabaugh claimed that the government had conspired to take his land by targeting the First Bank of Idaho, which eventually closed. Subsequent court filings show that Watsabaugh discovered and adopted the sovereign citizen movement ideology during that legal battle to the point where he filed a motion dismissing the case and revoking the authority of the court or any other fictional entity over his house. The foreclosure sale went through and the homeowners, the homeowners is listed in Teton County records as 2010-1RADC CADC property XVLLC, an arm of the uh, investment firm that bought out the Wasatas loan. The matter first came before Rada when Watsaba refused to leave his home and the new owners sought an eviction notice. I believe you have intentionally destructed my rights. Destructed, yeah, destructed my rights. I wanted to make sure that sounded a little strange. As well as breaching previous trusts and violating your oaths of office to defend the Constitution, Watsaba told uh, Rada in a handwritten filing delivered to the judge during the initial appearance. This done by arbitrarily depriving me of my property and my liberty. Watsaba more than once filed documents he claims suffices proof that he was 
quote unquote, not subject to relevant laws. He said several times that he did not consent to the jurisdiction of your court nor the state of Wyoming. He also claimed that he was to be released from captivity immediately as a peaceful inhabitant, protected by a series of laws governing uh, interaction with foreign nationals. Bradley Watsaba is out of jail after posting a $640 cash bail. Rebecca Watsaba remains in custody Tuesday under minimum security designation. What happens next will depend largely on whether the couple appears and cooperates at future hearings. So that was 2015. I'm going to take you over here now to 2016 and current. Here we are, July 10th. 2019. This was drafted by the same newspaper out of Jackson, Wyoming, the Jackson Hole News and Guide. Private National argues with judge over pending charges. Bradley Washtaw holds to position that he is a quote-unquote private national outside U.S. authority. If anybody happens to know or be able to locate the body cam footage of this traffic stop. Please post it in the comment section or email it to Virgo Triad at protonmail.com. I would like to see it and I have been unable to locate it thus far. All right, so on Monday morning in Tenton County, uh, yeah, Tenton County uh, Circuit Court, Bradley Wasabaugh asked Judge James Rada to dismiss the case against him so he can get on with his life. You are wasting the money of the people of the state, and you are wasting my time and energy, Wasaba told Rada. This case is void. Rada refused to dismiss the traffic charges against Wasaba, which included driving without insurance, driving under suspension, and driving without a valid registration. Wasaba uh, contended he's a, quote, private American national, end quote, and told Rada he does not consent to your proceedings. I have been forced with deadly threats to be the defendant, he said. The Jackson native renounced his Wyoming driver's license years ago for spiritual, religious, and personal reasons. However, he is not claiming to be a sovereign citizen. Watsbaugh said <clears throat> he removed himself from the government system in 2014 after officials took away the house he built on Budge Drive. He sent notice, he said, to the Teton County Sheriff's Office and the Wyoming Department of Motor Vehicles, alerting them to his canceled license. Watsabaugh, excuse me, Watsabaugh, who was representing himself in the case, claimed the prosecutors are the ones failing to follow the law because they haven't replied to his motions for discovery. The record clearly shows the plaintiff refuses to fill my request for discovery, Watsabaugh said. I have tried to call the state and go into their office. It results in direct fraud. If there is no response, that is fraud. If you are being impartial, you need to dismiss the case. Watsaba also argued the state of Wyoming can't proceed with the charges filed against him because there is no victim. In order for a victim to exist, there needs to be an injured party, Watsaba said. Do you have a victim? I am not going to argue with you, Mr. Watsaba, Rada said. Teton County Deputy Prosecutor Brian Holtman, representing the state, did not interrupt. I have been drug in handcuffs into this court and other jail. Watsaba said it's wrong. Watsaba was arrested in Sublet County in April on a failure to appear warrant that stemmed from an old Teton County traffic infraction. Watsaba was pulled over in Teton County in July of 2016 for driving with a homemade driver's license. When he refused the citations, he was arrested. A not guilty plea was entered, but Watsaba skipped his next court date and an arrest warrant was issued. Watsaba appealed his citation to the Wyoming Supreme Court, but justices denied his request to overrule the infractions. I have a lot of constitutional rights that appear to be violated here, Watsaba said Monday in court. A jury trial has been set 
for July 24th, in which Watsabaugh will represent himself. I will be keeping you up to date on this situation, but what I would like to do is draw your attention and ask you to comment in the comment section on this. Remember this guy? This picture is actually from 12 years ago, apparently. He was a captain at Station 1, volunteering for our community for a 12-year period. Come out of this Saturday, come out this Saturday night to see Brad and the rest of your local firefighters. Two, someone who is in trouble with the law all of the time and who is following the sovereign citizen movement like it's gospel. All stemming from what? From the fact that this gentleman built a home, paid it off, lived in it for over 30 years, and then decided to take out an equity loan on the property that got foreclosed on. We don't always see sovereign citizens fall into the sovereign citizen movement or become sovereign citizens within the movement simply because of something that um, has happened to them. But in this case, it has. And in a lot of cases, it has. And I do believe what ends up happening is that people that are in bad situations like Bradley found himself in, start searching the internet. They start watching YouTube videos. And that's when the scammers get them. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section, if you would. And if anybody has a link to the actual video of the um, footage where he was pulled over in 2016, I sure would appreciate seeing it. Um, I just, I find this incredibly sad because the longer time goes on, the further down the rabbit hole this man is going to the point where he's actually calling himself now a private national. Carrying a fake license or identification card, driving without insurance and registration and looking at real jail time over traffic infractions. This is a scary movement, guys. It's scary for other people on the road when there are people like this out there. And it's scary for the fact that we have people that don't do their research before they fall down the rabbit hole and continue to walk further down those tunnels. This movement and movements like it are destroying and rotting our country from the inside out. Let me know your thoughts. Oh, links are in the description, guys. Thanks.